This is Found Revenue with Tom Collins. Hey, everybody. It's Tom Collins, and here we are again for another awesome episode of the Found Revenue podcast. Found Revenue, helping you monetize your customer data, helping you find those extra nuggets of revenue that increase your customer value, helping you make money so you can afford to advertise, so you can afford it to profit big time. And frankly, what we hope is that all of that, all the things you're learning are helping you feel like you're printing money. So today we have Corey Durkin and uh, he's the kid. He's 26 years old, believe it or not. And he's a 10 year veteran of internet marketing, probably a little bit more, but uh, 10 years has a, a huge lead generation ad spend budget does a lot of information marketing. We're going to talk about those things. And uh, frankly, he's had just some really cool experiences in how he runs his ads, how he builds his audiences, and uh, some things that I think a lot of people don't talk about. And uh, we had a, a great conversation um, about those things and really how to build your own company so that's your own utopia. So I want to read to you Corey, Corey sent me, I asked him for a bio as I ask all of my guests for a bio and uh, you know, Corey's a creative type and uh, he said that this bio came, someone asked him for a bio about five minutes before he was about to speak and uh, this will give you a nice sense of the flavor of what you're about to hear because we had a lot of fun, he's a lot of fun to be around and uh, so here, here's Corey Durkin. Uh, he set the world record for drinking coffee, also holds, holds the distinct honor of having the most interesting resume. Here are a few facts about Mr. Corey Durkin. He speaks Russian in French. Uh, he'll never have a heart attack because his heart isn't nearly fool en foolish enough to attack him. He can kill two stones with one bird. Did you hear that? He can kill two stones with one bird. He's listed in Big Mike's phone as Vanilla Thunder, or as they say Vanilla Thunder. <laughs> anyway, we had a good laugh out that. Uh, when he works out, he doesn't get stronger. The machine does. He actually beat Lance Armstrong in a juggling contest. And he does every time he juggles against Lance Armstrong. He doesn't dial the wrong number. You just answer the wrong phone. And he knows Victoria's Secret. So help me welcome you to the podcast, the world's most interesting man, Mr. Vanilla Thunder himself, Mr. Corey Durkin, and uh, so glad you're here. Well, we are here, Found Revenue, with Corey Durkin, the man, the old soul in a young body. Dude, I'm so excited to have you here, man. We just read the uh, this intro of yours, which, you know, as you said, um, I'm, I'm just dying, because... Literally, you, you, you rip that off in five minutes off the top of your head to somebody else and you shared it with me. And I think it was, I, I honestly think you just dared me to do that, right? Because of course I was going to do it. So, I, I mean, I, I yeah. figured I, it was a layup. It was a layup for yeah. you. You know, it I mean, was. I, you know, I, I've been working on the voice. I don't know if I can pull it off. You know, the whole vanilla thunder. I mean, <laughs> does that work for you, dude? Or It, it works for me. I just want to hear <laughs> I want to hear the hour of outtakes that you do getting that intro down for the, for the recording. That's I, what I really want to hear I, I, I as a Christmas it. present, as a Christmas present from you to me this December, I would like you to send me that. I'm, I'm going to practice that dude. We'll, we'll, we'll get that down and we'll, we'll get it competitive with, you know, Mr. Boxing dude. I don't, I don't remember that guy's name, but I'm in. let's get ready to rumble. Vanilla thunder. So I'm dude, here. Yes. Welcome, man. Happy. Thanks for, Thanks for having me, man. This is so fun. I love jamming with you, dude. You, we you're one of you're one of my top you're one of my top one favorite people in the universe. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I'm glad to be on that particular list. <laughs> yes, right. That's, there's 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 more adjectives at, at, on that list, but that's the first part of it, and you're on that list as number one. <laughs> well, I, uh, I I do so much <laughs> appreciate it, man. So so we are here to talk found revenue. Um, Dude, would you do me a favor? Give me, give me a synopsis now. Now that we've re we've read the real intro, give me what business are you in? What businesses are you in? You and MJ. Absolutely. So um, I work. I'm very lucky and very blessed to work with my father uh, full time, uh, which is just a, it's the greatest joy of my life is to be, be able to work with him. To, you know, every single day. Um, 
And I was actually writing a, uh, a, a part, an intro for my new book today. And I was, I was talking about the, um, the challenge of describing uh, what I do to someone, you know, when you're at a party, oh, what do you do? And most people say, well, you know, I'm in accounting or I'm in finance, which I, to me is the most boring answer ever. It's like, oh, you're in, like, there's some, like, I think finance is cool. Like, tell me, I'm like, I'm the one that's like, tell me, what do you do? Like, what kind of, like, yeah. what kind of securities do you work with? So, um, so, so I, you know, I, I've, I've been kind of trying to figure out like, what's a really, cause like I'm a musician, right? And instead of being like, oh, I'm a singer songwriter. I said like, listen, like my music is called, I call it coffee house arena rock. <laughs> like that's what I call yeah. I'm not just a singer yeah. songwriter yeah. so you awesome. know so, so I'm actually trying to figure out like, like if I like can I do a one sentence answer that encompasses everything and I don't think you really can I think you know we were talking a little bit before we started we hit record about you know people who are entrepreneurs and they're kind of they're the outliers they're they're the freaks they're the people that like you can't put in a box and you so I might just be resigned to the fact that I do a ton of stuff, and if you hang out with me long enough, eventually you'll, you know, you'll uh, 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 get, get to know all of those different facets, you know. Um, but right. essentially, the core of it is that I run a uh, sales training and personal development company um, with my father. Uh, my younger brother works for us as well. Uh, we we have a an office here in uh, in the woods of Connecticut, um, and we uh, we help um, we help people. Uh, really, uh, there's sort of two different divisions, and we can talk more about that later. But um, uh, one division we we train we train direct sellers. We help them, uh, people who are in the direct selling industry, network marketing, brokerage agencies. Uh, we help them generate leads, uh, book appointments, and close sales. And um, and and some of that is offline tactics, and, and a lot of that is also online tactics um, and and online marketing for that type of stuff. Uh, the other the other section of our company. The other division um, is with the wealth development side of the company. So um, we have a, a series of um, a, an amazing program uh, that is uh, personal development based. It, it is about training the, the person's inner game. The inner game affects the outer world. And, and what we found was that actually came from the sales training side of things because we found that people really gravitated towards um, okay, it's nice to give me, it's nice to have the script, but how do I actually start to feel better about myself and my business? Because I can say the script a million times, but if I don't feel successful, if I don't feel like I'm fulfilled, if I don't feel like I'm truly happy with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. then I can say all, all the, all the, all the misaligned action you can take will not make up for internal misalignment. Uh, you, you know, That's I mean, very it, true, isn't it? Yeah. It, you know, you can work as hard as you want, but if you're not aligned inwardly, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So we, so we have, and it's fun. You know, I love the, uh, that, that program is called Think Like a Millionaire. And one of the things that I love is it's given us the opportunity to branch out and to sort of um, really have different conversations and different, get on different uh, uh, stages and work with different um, affiliates and, and, and people who are just sort of, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much broader uh, uh, audience in a sense. And, and I'm really, really having a blast with that. It's very, it's very rewarding. Well, it's, that's, that's awesome, man. It's, it's an awesome program. I've, I've gone through it. Right. You, you have. Yes. You know, it, it's it's fascinating going through something you you would I would say that I quote learned decades ago. Right. And then you I listened to it and it's just it was it was magical. And and, you know, part of this is heck, yeah, I'm, I'm sharing this as a promotional piece, but I loved it. And so why not? But but the the, the reality is some of those things ring true. And I can I would say. I can tell when somebody really understands those topics, right? And can take you deep on those topics. And, and MJ just, the conversations that he shared in there just resonated. And I'm, I'm going, yeah, you know, law, yeah, this law, that law, absolutely. And I'm, and I'm remembering like the time that I learned that and the first real experience I had with it and how I repeated it or how, oh, you know what? I, I can refresh. Anyway, it was just, just an awesome thing and and you know you quote see these names and titles everywhere and it's not the same this actually just really hit me and resonated deep and I, so you know we talked about that but 
That's big, man. I, I, I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, that, that I take that in for real. Um, it's, yeah. yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's really fun to, to run a business like this because not only do I get to work with my family uh, every single day, which is a blast, um, but, yeah. you know, we also have the ability to, um, you know, really take uh, people's businesses to the next level by finally breaking out of teaching the same old stuff that hasn't been working for the last 50 years. Yeah. It's been taught for the last 50 years, but it hasn't been working for the last 50 years. And, right. you know, stuff like goal setting, stuff like, um, you know, a, a positive saying your affirmations every single day, like, you know what, man, all that's great. Like I want a Ferrari. I want a Ferrari. Well, if you, if you, if you don't, if you like, you can say that a million times, you can write that down on a million different scraps of paper in a million different journals. And you know what? The Ferrari ain't showing up because like that, that part of it doesn't work because there's, you know, there, there it's, it's really about training. Um, it's about training the subconscious. It's about training the your, yourself on the inner game to really level up. And it's, it's kind of the idea of, tools versus principles, you know, in yes. marketing, yes. in internet marketing, people get so sidetracked by, oh my gosh, it's the, the, this new marketing phenomenon, this new social media site. Oh, Facebook just introduced messaging bots. Well, now I got to do that. And, and they get focused on the tools instead of focused on the, 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 the core principles of what makes this of what makes a business run, what makes marketing work, what makes right. a sales process work. And it's the same thing with working on, you know, your inner game, you know, working on the, the psychology of success, the principles of wealth creation, the, you know, the invisible laws of success, um, you know, the law of attraction, you know, that's all about the principles. If you have the principles down, if you're aligned, if you are in vibrational alignment with what you want to do, you, 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 you can't lose because you are on such a track of, um, of alignment with yourself, with your higher power, with, you know, um, and some people don't like the, the, the fact that I use the word God. And if you don't like that, then I wasn't talking to you. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, it's, but when, you, but when you're really aligned, mm -hmm. it, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if you say the wrong thing, it doesn't matter if you screw up the sales script. It doesn't matter if your, your landing page had a typo, you know, it really doesn't. That's if right. you understand the principles and you can, and you can really get to the core of what makes um, uh, of what makes a business run and what makes you aligned as an entrepreneur. The rest really, truly takes care of itself. And I've seen so many people who understand the principles of you know. I mean, I come from an internet marketing background. Uh, you know, I left, I dropped out of high school to start learning this stuff. And um, you know, so for me, uh, you know, I've seen plenty of people who are like so old school and and they will, and they will read, like they'll still to this day, will get like the, the old school direct response swipe files off of eBay and read those. And the same things that worked in the Jay Peterman catalog, you know, back, back in the nineties, like still work today in a Facebook ad. It's all the same stuff, but it's about the principle, not the, not the tool, you know, the tools are always going to change, but the principles stay the same. And so we've really developed um, something that I think is, it just, it's, it's, it's so powerful and so different in, in terms of teaching people about the psychology of success and how to really anchor that to, uh, you know, to real change. Yeah. Well, and, and like you said, it, what you guys produce resonates at the core level with the person and changes the person internally. Right. And, and you and I've had this conversation. I have this conversation all the time of there's these words we throw around that are industry words and, they have different levels of meaning depending on your experience with them and what you know about them and the impact that can be done with them. And at the same time, you know, every time we would sell coaching it, you know, back in the day, we'd sell coaching on how to invest in real estate, how to do the internet, blah, blah, you know, whatever the curriculum was. Sure. And I, I want to say it was Dean Graziosi that said, you know, the most important thing we can do is get the fog out of people's brains. So they stop limiting themselves and the two most popular trainings that we had, once people got to choose the training outside of the, the, the formal curriculum, goal setting, time management, productivity, how to be a better person, right? They just came to that in mass because once they tried to improve themselves and they hit a wall where they couldn't execute and it had nothing to do with the, with the curriculum of real estate, you know, Dave Seymour says that's a fifth grade, it's fifth grade math to invest in real estate, right? Well, I don't want to offend people who think it's hard, 
But at the same time, the thing that slows you down is your personal, the inside, the inner you, like you said. So when I went through Think Like a Millionaire, I was just like, dude, we, we, you know, that makes all the difference. And we've lived that, you know, selling a billion dollars of coaching that after they buy curriculum, man, they, the first thing they need to do is improve their inner game. And so the tandem that you guys set up was, was phenomenal. So frankly, again, shameless plug. If you guys need someone where your customers are buying, but they're not producing like you would like them to, it's probably not the front end sale, but it's a great back end supplement um, to make a, a, a big difference. And so, you know, go listen to it. Judge for yourself, Corey. I'm sure I'll give you samples and, and we're not here just to plug that, but it's just so freaking good. And, and you know, I want to get that out early on. Um, so, so as Thank we you, go. My friend. So, so anyway, dude, rumor has it, you spend a little bit of money online advertising. Oh, yeah. That's, Absolutely. Let's just, let's just go there, and then we'll talk about some of your evolution. Um, <laughs> tell, tell, you're known as the lead gen guy. You can, you can produce leads. And it, you, you and I talk about it, and you go, oh, I did this, and we tried that, and we drove this many. And, and so, right, like you implement and can do – you're more multifaceted than most guys that I've met who can drive online leads. Most guys start to, to niche down and get good at one or two things, right. which I think is very valuable. You kind of have a little different, like you're, you're able to fail fast forward. Give, me, give us a description of that. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, it, if you have enough coffee and you have enough, uh, it, you know, I have two of my assistants that are in my house right now that are going over in the video studio. So if you have enough people cleaning up the mess behind you, it's it's fine. You know, it's just the it's just the it's just the massive detritus that you you know the massive uh, devastation that you leave in your wake. That's the real problem with being multi multi dimensional. <laughs> I would I would prefer that I was niched into one or two things. It would make my life a lot easier. But um, but I love it all. I mean. You know, I started, um, you know, I, well, let's see, when I was, when I was uh, 16, I sat my father down with an 89 slide PowerPoint presentation and asked him to let me leave high school. Um, and, and, uh, and at the time, what I did not know was that, you know, my, my, my dad raised me as a single father and we were re still recovering from the divorce um, emotionally and also financially. So I really didn't know that he had uh, um, done everything in his power to send me for ninth and 10th grade to a private Catholic high school, um, that he had gone to. Um, and that was a big deal for him. And that was a big sacrifice, which I, I knew nothing about. I never knew we had, uh, you know, any money issues. He was like, totally like, we got it. No problem. I hadn't, I, I mean, a lot of kids have ideas that their parents have money. Issues. I never had a clue. He was totally the rock for yeah. the family. And, and it was really incredible. Um, yeah. And, and that's kind of where the, you know, that's kind of where the, the, this journey of the psychology of success uh, and, you know, sort of the, the, the wealth creation principle started was around this time um, for both of us. Um, so I, so anyway, so I sat down with him and I said, I want to leave high school. And because that had been such a huge sacrifice for him to send me there, he, uh, it was a bit like, that wasn't me just being like, Hey, I want to leave school. He's like, man, I like, I killed myself to send you to this school. Do you want to leave? Like, are you kidding me? You know? Um, but, but I had, I had read, I, you know, my father was an entrepreneur. Um, he uh, was, was a salesman for, for a couple, for years in his twenties. And he started a water treatment company um, that he uh, grew, uh, built and then sold, um, which was very successful. And then he started doing, um, took a lot of his years in the, in the sales training field and started doing sales training. Mm -hmm. I started a sales training company. Um, and so, uh, so I was around that kind of mentality my whole life. And I had read all of the seminal books on entrepreneurship and business building. And, you know, and I said, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to go to, and I was a good student. You know, I was a, I was a, um, I was definitely a, a 4.0 uh, minus the math, the math. I had to cheat off the girls in math class, but, um, but everything else I was, I was, I was, I was, I really was like, I was a straight A student and I was, was school was, 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 was not a huge challenge, but, um, but I knew that I didn't want to go to four years of college and trade hours for dollars. Um, and so when I left school, I was, uh, I wanted to be a musician at the time. And so I was touring, I was doing college shows. I was playing, I was playing anywhere I could play borders. Bookstores were still around back then. I was playing Starbucks when they would let me play and I would yeah. set up my PA and make tips. And when I was touring in my father's Buick rendezvous, um, I, uh, I also had a lot of time, a lot of downtime. And so I started learning, um, 
I learned SEO and Google AdWords at the time. So my, 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 my initial entry into the lead gen market uh, the, the, was, was, was Google AdWords back in, you know, 05, 06. Okay. Um, and that was really where it, it started. Um, and one of the things uh, in terms of um, driving the leads that I found, um, I found, because I started, I didn't have any products to sell. Um, and at the time, my father and I hadn't teamed up and, and, and joined forces. His business was pretty much, you know, all live events at that point. Okay. Um, and, and, and I found that I had to learn how to, to uh, I was doing affiliate offers. So I was, I was marketing other people's products. I, I figured out how to make the math work again. Like Dave says, like it's fifth grade math. Well, it's, it's fifth grade math to sell, to buy real estate, but it's also fifth grade math to sell stuff online. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's like if you can spend, if, if what your, if your cost to get somebody to put in their credit card is, is less than, um, is less than the money that they're going to pay you on the initial transaction or the first 30 days or the first 60, 90, 120 days, you know, if you can make the numbers work, you're golden. So I figured out, oh my gosh, like this is like a, the internet is like an ATM machine. I can just run traffic. And as long as, you know, the, the, the payouts from the person that I'm promoting an offer for work, I can just keep going forever. Like it was the coolest thing. And so then That's I very awesome. quickly realized I did not want to sell $10 CDs, um, which by the way, now are useless. Um, uh, I still have a bunch in my basement. If anyone was looking to have, a, a, have if, you need, if you need a coaster or a ninja star um, uh, with a few modifications, you can make them into ninja stars. And boy, do I have a ton of records in my basement that I can give you um, from, <laughs> from, from 2008. Um, Wait. So uh, yeah. So if you, that's a, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, so, you know, so I, I, I realized that that math worked. And so to me, uh, I think the other thing that really helped me with understanding how to drive traffic was, again, was the principles part of it. So uh, because I was promoting different offers, different stuff in the health, in the health and wellness space, um, in the, a little bit in the make money space, um, I learned how to think about each different, uh, the psychology of each different buyer when I was writing the ads and I was working on the front end pieces. And so I started to think about, you know, and it's a very, it's, it's, it's a, to, to think about, okay, what is somebody who wants to get a six pack? What are they thinking? What are their, what is their emotional need versus what is the person thinking who wants to make an extra $300 a week to supplement their nine to five? Um, mm -hmm. uh, doing, doing that was, was, was as an exercise was very helpful. And I think that um, it's helpful to, to, to do that when you're trying to learn and trying to write your own ads or trying to write your own sales copy because a lot of times we are so close to our target market that we can't see the forest through the trees. Right. So right. when you're the when you're the when you're the person selling and whatever it is, whether it's life coaching, whether it's um, you know uh, health and fitness, like you're we're so focused on the sales aspect of it that we can't help but being focused on the features and benefits part of the sale, right. which does not make a sale. It's You're not emotional. Not good for you. So, so, so let me, let me draw you out a little bit there. Yeah. 16 years old. Yep. And you're thinking, what is an adult who wants a six pack? Right. Why, how, how did you get into their brain and their thinking? How did you, do you have an exercise that you used to go there? What was, what was your thought process of how you got into somebody else's head. I mean, most 16 year olds can only think about three things, you know, right. You know, yes. Week, right. Yes. <laughs> all of them, all of them related to video games, I think. Uh, yeah. At some yeah. level. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, <laughs> I mean, a couple of things that, that I think that I think helped me kind of get that is, um, is number one, I would actually sit by hand and, and, and write out old school sales letters. Ah. So I'm very, I'm very experiential. You can tell me something, you can yeah. show me something. I'm not going to pick it up, I, but, but if I write it out, I'll, 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 I'll get it. Um, and, so, and that's the kind of learner I am, right? Exper yeah. A kinesthetic learner. And, so did you write sales letters from those targets, from the thing you were trying to sell or was it just? So, so, yeah. so, so first I started with those. Yeah. So I went to the, the, like the top selling products at the time. Okay. Um, and, and, the, and, and I would, and I would write out, I would go, I would find their websites and I would, and I would print them out and I would literally sit there by hand and write out the sales pages word for word. Um, and for me, 
I'm not telling everybody to do that. For me, that worked because like I said, I'm a kinesthetic learner. Cause that, yeah. You know, that, that's, that's, that's what worked. Um, for, uh, for people who are, who are visual, um, uh, they, they might, or, or auditory, um, it might be beneficial for them to record themselves reading the sales letters and then playing them over and over again, like whatever gets that okay. subconscious brain. So I, and I did that. It was the same way that I learned, you know, scales on a guitar. Like I sat there in freshman and sophomore year of high school and I drew out the scales in my notebooks because I didn't care what was going on in class. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I, that's how I learned the minor pentatonic is just re repetition. And now I'm playing a gig. I'm, you know, it's, it's effortless. It's like, I don't have to think about it. It's just, Oh, that's songs in E. And then I'm like, I'm, you know, it's like ripping a solo and there's no thought to it. There's no, it, it becomes part of the DNA. And so whatever you have right. to do to get yourself into that mindset of the buyer or the mindset of, because, because yeah, the, the, the person who has a really good, let's call it health and wellness product, they, they've created that sales page and it's, and, it, and it's selling well. That's why it's there. Yeah. So if you can, exactly. if you can start to continuously, if you can ingest that and let it sort of like become part of you on a cellular level, however that works for you, whether that's reading it a million times, recording it and then listening to it, writing it out like I had to do. Um, that's one of the things that I did that was really powerful uh, in terms of learning how to think about that, you know, the, 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 the mindset of the buyer. And then the other thing I did was I, I started to learn some of the more old school direct response guys, Ogilvy and, and some of those guys. Mm -hmm. And, and so I would find their old school ads and I would write them and they were like, you know, page long ads in a magazine, black and white, you know, I right. find them on eBay or whatever. But, um, but, uh, but that was really powerful because I saw the principles matched up to the new, the newer school, you know, mid two thousands online marketing. And I realized like, Oh, like the same, they're pulling the same levers. It just looks a little bit different. The right, same ad right. that Ogilvy in wrote in 1960. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The, yeah. sa the same, the same magazine ad that he wrote in 1960 uh, or whenever that was probably a little earlier was, was the same. It's the same principles that are being used in 2006 to sell, you know, six minute ads or whatever. So it's the, it was right. the same, and that, when I'm, when I made that connection, that was really the moment that I said, Oh, like I get this. And again, it's about principles versus tools. Like the tools are going to change. It's going to look a little different, but like speaking to somebody in a way that they can understand and making an emotional connection in an advertisement, in a sales letter, in an email, in a Facebook ad, in a Facebook messenger bot chat back to a customer. It's the same exact thing every time. Tools are tools. That's it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Tools. Response is response, right? That's it. It doesn't, doesn't matter how cool anything, and if you don't know how to reach that person on the inside the way you do. So, 100%. Well, and, that, and that's, and that's yeah. also why, like, I never, like, I, that's also why I never, um, like, I'll, I'll, I'll pull this up right now while we're talking. Like, um, I know plenty of guys who do paid traffic, and they go crazy with, like, oh, you got to start it at, you know, you got to start the ads at X time because that's when Facebook's ad open, uh, uh, office right, opens right. and, <laughs> and, you know, and you got to split test it by 3% and then do an ad to look alike and then do this. I'm like, man, I don't, like, I don't have time for that stuff. Like you said earlier, I like, I do way too many things. Like I am behind on 17 things right now and I love, it. I wouldn't have any other, but man, like I don't have time to be like, like to, to, to sit there and just look at the numbers and crunch the data. I do not have time for it. And, but be, I think because I, you know, really focused on the, the fundamentals, um, I was able to kind of create a, a system where, uh, uh, you know, the, the ad, the ads will work. So like, I just started this ad a couple, like two and a half weeks ago, I'm doing, it's like a little tiny, I'm just testing some stuff out. I had never done it before. Oh, cool. We're out of the learning phase now. Nice. Um, I just boosted the, oh no, it's still learning. Okay. So this, 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 this is a little tiny, uh, Facebook ads funnel. Um, I'm bidding on conversions. So people that give me their name and email address. Um, I started at $10 a day. Now I'm up to $18 a day, about three weeks later. And, um, and I'm getting $2 and 65 cent, uh, leads on this, on this little, this little, uh, this little sales funnel. And I did one ad. I didn't do, I, sw I mean, I did, I didn't split test a million different creatives. I didn't do a million different images. I That's said one ad. Man. Didn't you, didn't you buy the product? I know. I know. What? They all, they, they all what? said. How, I, you have to have like 87 ad sets and 4,756 ads and use the software. Why, why does, so 
clearly there's, there's methodology out there that works, right? So I don't want to make too much fun, but I want to go the other way with, because I know you and I know how you do it. There is another way and you do it another way. And that is you understand actually how to reach the person through the ad, right? Well, and, that, it, it, and that's what works as opposed to, and, and let me, let me kind of nail this and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it out of the way, but the, so many people are follow the leader that they're doing so many of the analytical pieces that they plug in all the analytical stuff and they write ads that don't have any punch. They write ads that copy what they learned in the training, but they're not, they don't understand ad writing and copy and human connection, right? 100%. You understand human connection as, as you, you've discussed. And so you write the ad and go, Hey, let's, let's go after this connective piece. Did that one work? And then you go, okay, here are the five other connective pieces that resonate as we go and, and expand that as Yeah, I think I mean I think that's well, that's I mean if look your ads working, you'll just keep going and then you'll try the next right. right. And then you just keep scaling it up. But, you know, yeah. I mean, again, and this is why, you know, people, uh, friends of mine ask me all the time, will you do my ads? I said, I've never done ads for anybody else. I will not do ads for anybody else. Like, I'm right. not an ads guy. Like, I'm right. known as a lead gen guy and I'll, like, help friends out and, like, take a look at stuff. But I never do it for anyone else but our own businesses because well, for a lot of reasons. But, but you know, but uh, one of them is that it's not a, it's certainly not an exact science that I'm practicing. As you said, it's about finding the connective components and making a, making a real connection with the person who's looking yeah. at that ad. So, so, so the, the, what this audience and what most audiences want to hear is, well, Corey, you're only spending $10 a day. You're only spending $18 a day, but I hear you're spending four or five, six figures a month, right? Make that connection for us. Cause I think there are a lot of people on the low end who spend five or $10 a day. Then there are the, the guys who spend a lot of money and they figured it out. And I don't know that publicly a lot of people explain and make that connection. Can you make that connection for? Well, I think, everybody? I mean, well, number one, you, you can't start off spending. Um, it, if we're talking about, well, if we're talking about anything really, Facebook ads, Google display network, you can't start off spending $5,000 a day. You just can't push play on an ad that's going to spend 5,000 a day. and You're going to hope your numbers work because you don't know. Right. This particular example is a brand new funnel. I've never, I've never sold this before. Never even tested it before. In fact, I'll be honest with you, this ad set that I'm talking about right now, they go to an opt-in page and then it goes, <laughs> it gets taken right to a page that says, hey, thanks, check your email for your download. <laughs> and the download is right. there, but that's it. There's no sale. There's no video. There's no nothing. It's just testing. And, what, and, and what, you don't and, have to do all nine steps of the funnel? In the, oh, I know. Isn't that crazy? You know, it's, I, I'm telling you. Heresy, man. Her no. I know. Unless you got it all uh, dialed in. Somehow you know. you're the magic man. So anyway, you know I'm making fun. Right? No, of course. But, but, but I, I, I mean that's – I want to help people think and break some of the – Sure. These hard and fast rules in their head because they're learning from someone who goes, here's how I do it. And they think that's the only way they have to do it, right? Absolutely. And so, so, yeah. And, and so, well, what, so my yeah. goal would be – my Glad goal will be stuff. eventually to, to scale – if this ad set continues to work, will be to scale it up to – you know, a, a, a 250 a day, um, a thousand a day, you know, five, six, ten thousand dollars a day. If the numbers work, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not selling them anything in this one right now. So I know the number right now, the numbers do not work at all. I'm going to be honest with you. But, but, but what I do is, you know, so, so for, for, for me in this case, I'm looking at it as, okay, if, if I start the ads, then the, then, then the rest of the process will follow. So if I start the ads yes. on a new funnel that I'm trying to test, um, it'll force me to make the creative. It'll force me to create the rest of the funnel. I think that the big, uh, this is okay. So this is a big strategy for me, right? It's okay. if it's putting, it's putting myself on the line to make it happen. So if yeah. I say, all right, I'm going to get all nine steps of the funnel done. Right. So like, let's say about like a typical set, like a typical funnel that like, someone's going to teach you to put out in Facebook ads, like free plus shipping to an order bump to uh, upsell one, upsell two. If I want to test out a new sales funnel and see if I can reach a different audience and I don't have those other pieces dialed in, well, b because of all the crazy stuff that I do, it's going to take me seven, seven years to do all that. So it'll be nine months before I'm getting ready to get ready. It's, it's, it's nine months of getting ready to get ready and thinking that I'm checking stuff off my to-do list and being productive for this new Facebook ads funnel. It's going to be so great when I have no idea if it's going to work at all. So you know what? Three weeks ago, I started this. I think it might have been two weeks ago. I started this ad 
um, this, this little ad set for just $10 a day because I said, you know what, once that ad set reaches X amount of people on the mailing list, it's going to force me to start creating content and start connecting with them because now I got money going out the door. I want to be able to connect with those people and really, and, and, and really, you know, build something. So, but, but the other part of that is that now that I have a hundred people, I, I have 101, I've, 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 Facebook says 101 conversions. Um, Dude, you're um, killing it. It's fun. But, but now I have 101 people on a mailing list. Right. Live, so, active, paid for. It's performance time, right? And you're a performer. Exactly. Right. But, if I, but if I just say, if I wait yes. for the theoretical list to appear, I'm never going to do yes. the work to fill in the rest of the funnel. So now what I'm going right. to do, my plan is starting to have real conversations with them about saying like, listen, like, what do you, what do you want? What do you need? What are you really struggling with? And instead of backing into the, instead of creating the funnel on the front end and hoping like spending so much time to do a book, to do an order bump, to do a, to do two or three upsells. Instead, I get to work with a new audience, that a new audience segment I've never connected with before and say, what do you really need? What do you really want? How can I serve you? And then back into how am I going to build out the rest of that sales funnel? And my belief and what I've always right. proven myself to be, to, to, proven to, to be true in most cases, not every case, but eh, pretty much. I mean, if you really, if you, if you know what you're doing and you know the arena that you're in, if you, even if you don't monetize right away, if you give really good value, you really care about your customers and you really um, ask them what they want, then it's, you're going to monetize, you're going to be in, in, the, in the black eventually. Even if you're negative for a little bit, Absolutely. it's not going to be a big deal. Absolutely. I, I, the question I see all the time is, how do I scale? My ads are marginal. I've done the formula, blah, blah, blah right? I'm stuck. And it's the connection that's missing where you start with the connection and go, hey, I think this is the connection. You run some ads. Oh, there's a spark. Now let's add step two of that connection. Okay, let's, let's ask the 101 people now because I think a lot of people get discouraged or feel like they're not doing enough when they're only spending 10 bucks a day or they only have 100 opt-ins and they're like, but I'm not huge yet. And you know what? You're still on the right path is what I, the reason I wanted to draw this out is this is the process. Everybody starts at a few bucks a day on the new ad set. You know, it's five and it's 10 and it's 20 and, and, and everybody has a comfort level of how they scale and, and those things. But what I love is that, that you're not one building the whole thing and having this theoretical, okay, what's the 30 second email we're going to write? It's more, yeah, so I've been working with them for a while. We've written 32 and this one really responded. So we're going to bump that one up, right? And it's live, interactive, real-time feedback so that you can make accurate decisions yep. because you're really actually connecting. You're actually living that connection, right? And that allows you to scale. And I, I, I think it, it, it's worth letting, you know, I don't know that people know, you know, you have a few thousand members in your membership and right? You spend a lot of money on lead gen, right? So people need to be aware that you're not just spending a thousand dollars a week on ads and making this lifestyle money. You, you actually have a pretty significant business and you know, you can talk about it as much as you want, but what I really want to draw out is that there's this process you use is just a different way. And there are some people that the other agency trainer processes are just perfect for because they like to follow that blueprint. Other people are more artistic and more connector, more creative. And I think if you can learn the art side of the science, it allows you to kill it and not just kill it, but to know you're on the right path to killing it sooner and, and, and doing it well. So anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that's accurate. I mean, because, I because draw that out is a, this is a, a, a way to look at things and then you can plug in the analytics and the logic and right. And, and, and give some math to it beyond as much. As much as you can, which I can't, I, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't do, I mean, again, as much as you want to, or as much as you're capable of play within your skill set, right? Like for me, right. like duplicating ad sets and going crazy with split tests and like, do the, are the, do the numbers now, do the numbers work? Okay, cool. Let's keep it going. Do the numbers not work? All right, shut it off to start again. And now again, this, this kind of ad set, you know, I mean, it, depending on what scaling strategy you're using, for example, you know, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna take a couple of months to get it up to 
500, a thousand a day. Like it's not, it's not, it's not easy to right. just, to just run and gun it. And I wouldn't want to anyway, cause I don't know what the, what the numbers on the back end of this thing are yet. Yeah. Um, but I think that, uh, the idea also is to understand that you do have to have, um, and I'm using this as an example cause it's one that I'm excited about and it's, a, it's fun and new and whatever, but like, there's plenty of times that like, you know, you try an ad set and the numbers don't work or, and you can't figure out why. And there's a lot of different ways. Like, you know, to me, I look at advertising, a lot of people try to figure this stuff out and try to be like, well, this is the reason that the ad didn't work right. And this is why the numbers don't work. It's like, well, that's maybe that's true, but like, you really don't know. And if you look into some of the bigger advertising trainings on Facebook or Google Display Network, it's like, it's kind of like, like, <laughs> like they're giving you guidelines and people will give you guidelines and that's definitely helpful. But what I've found works for me is really kind of conceptualizing it as the idea that I don't know what Facebook's doing. I don't know what Google's doing. I think I know, but I've had plenty of campaigns that I've duplicated and like done the exact same thing with vastly different results. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's less about being a perfectionist about the metrics and the analytical side of things and more about focusing on, um, you know, just, just having more shots on goal is really what it comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. I love that too. I love that. It's fun. It's fun, you know. You get to create more ads and write more weird stuff and see if Facebook fans are for it. You know, I mean, is what it is. Oh man, well, dude, this is this is so fun. So I wanna I wanna ask you a couple. You you shared with us some of the the personal stuff, but uh, what do most people not know about you until they get really really close? Right, like we got we got close pretty quickly. Right, we met at a mastermind and had a few conversations and resonated right so soul what? brother number one <laughs> yeah <man>. absolutely bro <laughs> vanilla, thunder, baby. vanilla thunder yep he's like that's my boy that's my boy tom collins looked at me across the room and said vanilla thunder that's my boy i'm in bring it on baby that's it uh, what, would, what would most people not know about me until they got up close yeah um i use natural deodorant that's a new thing that i've switched to that most people wouldn't oh. know about me yep there you go. I think it's called Every Jack. I tried a couple ones. I wouldn't recommend the sandalwood kind because I put it on and it burned my armpits and it was terrible. I was running around my house like flapping my arms like a chicken. I couldn't understand why I hurt so bad. But so I wouldn't recommend the sandalwood. But there's a the red kind that I use is great. I learned like don't use the regular right guard uh, uh, stuff that you can buy in a grocery store because they have aluminum in and all kinds of other stuff that you're just like putting on. I was like, well, that's probably not a good thing. So I stopped that. So that that's something that people wouldn't that's know about me. Fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I found that out when I was over 40. Yeah, like, right. So how I much mean, aluminum do I have in me? Yeah. Right. Exactly. You're, Am I you're, magnetic? Yeah. Right. You're at least three, three and a half percent aluminum based on what I can tell right, right now. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's gone down though since I met you. So it's been, it's been a while. You know? Okay. Hey, so, so, so what about this, man? You guys have so much fun all day long and yet you're pretty dang serious about what you do. So you, you sent me an ad that you sent for a secretary, right? <laughs> Yes. And I'm, I'm pulling this up right now. And, uh, I, I think, I think a lot of people specifically in a, in a small business, you know, you're just like, dude, whatever. And, and there are some, you know, there's the, the Chet Holmes style ads out there that are rock stars only. And if you don't suck and it's just kind of hardcore and then there's the, the, you know, boring professional and, and you, you end up with people, good people maybe, but you don't know. And then you start an ad that says, if you don't like Seth Rogen, Will Ferrell, or Chris Rock, this job is probably not for you. This is for an administrative assistant person, right? Yes. And if you don't, you know, so you live in New England. If you don't have a reliable car that is four, that's four-wheel drive or similar to navigate the fact in caps that we live in New England and it snows here a lot, this job is absolutely not for you. Dude, just, I mean, seriously. It's that is so much fun right? And their job is actually going to be to be a customer happiness rock star. So people used to think this all was with the whole funded.com era stuff. And you're running, you know, ads, you know, here's what you need to know about us. Number two is we're hilarious, right? I, you know, I don't know if you're going to ask her about juggling with Lance Armstrong or anything like that, or, or the, whoever applies, but at the very end, the qualifying trick here is if you're still reading this and you think you're up for the challenge, you know, send your resume, et cetera, with two and a half sentences detailing the contents of your favorite caffeinated beverage and tell us 
you have to be a New York Yankees fan. Tell us Tino Martinez on base percentage in 1987. <laughs> That's it. That's Dude, it. There's like, there, and, and, and you live in Connecticut, right? So you're like, I mean, you're, you're close to Yankee territory, but I mean, that is so much fun, man. That <laughs> it's is a blast. So much fun. And there's, gonna... there's, there's clearly in there the, you must be and here are the points that apply. What I, what I love is that you're going to kill all the grammar drama queens because not one of those sentences starts with a capital letter. <laughs> right. I mean, and you just go, Hey, we have a ton of fun. Every day is different. Some are hard. That's life, whatever. And it's, I just, I just love the, the combination and I just, you know, I, I love it. And, and I think what's, what's interesting is um, I had so many thoughts. There are so many good ad writers out there that like are tricking people to come apply for a job. I have a niece who applied for an internship and she walked into some crazy place. Right. She's like, Whoa, I'm out of here. And, and yet this job is so deceivingly funny that you're going to send so many people packing because they'd be like, uh, I don't know if I could handle these guys. hundred percent, hundred percent. And you're going to get the coolest people in the world to come work for you and go, I just had to check you out, man. Cause what in the heck? Absolutely. Right. And, and it's, and I'm going to see if we can, I just texted one of my assistants who I had said, she said, Hey, I just finished up. Do you still need me to stick around? And I said, no, I'm good. And I said, wait, come into the office. So I'm going to see if I can get her on here real quick um, okay. for, for a, a, oh, one sweet. of our, one of our newest employees. So I can, I can have her speak to this directly. Oh, let's, I see love if she, this. let's see if she sees it before she leaves my house. But, um, but yeah, you know, I think it's, I think what it really is, it is about, man, life is too boring to have to like, or life is too, Oh, that's our car driving away. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. That kind of looks like a, all right, well, I'm not sure she left. We'll find out. We'll figure it out. Um, but, uh, but, but the bottom line is, um, I'm just going to tell her to like, you can leave if you need to leave. Um, uh, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't see this, never mind. We didn't need you anyway. It's fine. Um, it's, it's, it's no worries. If you didn't see this, uh, no worries. Um, it's said no tires. Um, I think one of the biggest things about, um, uh, hiring people, uh, hiring new employees is the fact that, you know, like your business is your own utopia. That's the way I feel like, uh, that's the way I feel about it. Like we have so much fun. We have such a blast. Um, my brother, my father and I, we laugh like crazy. And to, to just bring in somebody to do a basic, like here, like do some administrative stuff like, um, like business is good. We're hiring a, you know, a bunch of new employees in the last you know, two or three months. Like it's been fun. Like I've spent more time on ZipRecruiter than I could have ever possibly imagined. Um, uh, and, and, and like, it's a good time, but I don't want to hire people that are, that don't understand and don't get that like DNA. We're a small family business. We are hilarious. We have so much fun. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We're not worried about being perfect. We're not worried about being the most professional. We're, we're focused on being genuine. We're focused on being real. Mm -hmm. We're focused on really connecting with our clients and serving them. And a lot of people say that, and it's kind of like, I feel like it's sort of like a cliche for at this point, like, Hey, you know, you know, well, you really just want to serve my customers at the highest level. Like, that's my goal at the end of the day. It's like, well, like, okay. Like I, I get that, but like, there's a real, there's a, yeah. I mean, it's boring as, it's as boring as heck, you know, like what we want to do is we want to have fun, man. Like we want to have a blast. We want to love what we're doing. We want to, you know, really like have the ability to move fast and to be versatile and to be agile. And that's one of the, the big, the characteristics that a small business had that the big corporate guys don't, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's your only real, that's your only real tactical advantage. Like if you think about it in a battle scenario, like, you know what, like if you're fighting the, the Roman Legion, like they're huge, but they can't, they can't, Mark, bark uh, orders at their now I, I'm a high school dropper but I do know that the Roman Legion does not exist anymore but um but but I but if you're fighting the Roman Legion you you know you they, they can't bark orders to their different divisions nearly as fast as you can with your you know merry band of like you know Robin Hood guys in the forest so that's your advantage so for us to hire people who not only get that but also get the the um <laughs> i find sarcastic people to be very good at sort of like being in that business environment and adapting to that kind of world so uh, that's one of the reasons why it's the the ad that particular ad says like oh like if you're you know if you're not sarcastic if you're not sarcastic enough to like turn off or to like make some of your fellow humans mad like this probably isn't going to be a good fit for you you know yeah, because because people need to be able to like really 
be sarcastic. It's like, to me, sarcasm is like getting the hilarity of life and not taking yourself too seriously. It's like, it's like, it's like sarcasm. People who are really sarcastic, I feel like are really in on the joke of life, which is like, <laughs> dude, you're never going to get, get out of this life alive. I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Like you can't take any of this with you. So like, stop worrying so much and have a little more freaking fun. So that's what we try to do. And, um, and uh, it's a, it's a good time. It really is. So, so, you know, to inject that into our, into our employees, into our, uh, into our, into our courses, into our seminars, into our podcasts, into hanging out. Like, man, like we, we work hard. We work like, we work like crazy, man, but we, we love it. And we really, we really treat it, um, uh, as, as, uh, as we get to create how the, the environment, the way we want it to be. And I want to be m- me as a business owner. I want to have employees that are fun, that are hilarious, that get the joke, that are sarcastic, that are able to really like just be in that flow. And I don't want anybody else who doesn't match with that. I, I do not want anybody who can't like, if they don't match up to that, like that's fine, but that's, this is definitely not the job for you because man, like, Oh, but we have just, we have so much fun here at the up. I mean, it's just such a blast. We can't, it's, it's great. That's so awesome, man. You can totally, you can, anyway, just five minutes with you and you totally feel that. <laughs> you totally, totally get that. I love it. Oh my gosh. All right, man. So we're going to wrap up. I think what we're going to have to do is you and I could go forever and, and we're just going to have to have you back. I think, you know, one of the plans is, is to start doing some live stuff in the, in the Facebook group. So if you're in the found revenue Facebook group, you've made a good choice. If you're not, go there because we're going to go riff on some specific topics. One thing we're not going to talk about here, we'll talk about there is you and I have talked about hiring salespeople. Oh yeah. Don't even go there because that, that was, you had an experience that was a total epiphany. And I think, you know, a couple weeks after we roll this out, maybe we'll have you on live and share that story and some of the things that, that are working for you. Cause pretty cool. Oh man. It's the coolest. Oh, I'm like, I right. was, t- oh yeah, anyway. absolutely. Just like mind blown. Yeah. I'm excited yes, to talk about so. that. We'll jam on that for sure. So we'll consider that the best teaser ever. And then <laughs> we need, we need to bring some, some of your music in too as well. So Corey's is a fantastic musician. You know, like I said, he's got all those CDs he talked about. Those are yours. Yours. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, they are. And, anyway. and now, and now cars aren't made with CD players anymore. I didn't know that was going to happen. Right. You know, my, my mom still drives a car that has a tape player from 2005 and she bought it. She, she particularly chose that model over another one because it had a tape player because her, you know, church talks can go in there, but love awesome. it. Love it. Awesome. Anyway. So yeah. So fantastic. We've had tons of talks on music. So dude, now what, uh, I'm, I'm the Dan Patrick type question. Yeah, give them to me. I'm ready. I'm what's, ready. I've been waiting for this all week. What's the biggest prank you've ever pulled on MJ? Oh, the biggest prank I ever pulled on my father. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> if, all it's, right. if it's one he pulled on you and you want to tell yeah. him, that's Yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm try- I mean, there have been a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones. When you're raised by a single father, there's, um, uh, there was the time... I drove one, I drove his car to Georgia and didn't tell him, which wasn't so much of a prank as so much of it was a, was a unexplained spontaneous road trip. <laughs> um, so that was a fun one. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, pranks on him. I never played. I, I, I think there were a few little moments like that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. It's tough when you're on the spot like that, but yeah, the, the car, the car one, the car one, yeah. Jessica says she just saw that on the road. Okay, good. She's already she's already gone. Good. Um, uh, yeah. I think that that's probably one of the. You know, I mean, for me, my, my pranks with my dad. We 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 have a lot of we have a lot of fun together. And um, uh, you know, raising me as a single father, he um, he taught me to play on his team. You know, his big his big message to me a lot of the time was like, listen, like it's you and me, man. Like I need like I need you to play on my team. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things that we um really have a had a blast doing back in the days like you know like hanging out watching match reruns watching cheers like friend uh, 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 uh fraser um you know like like stuff like that so so i don't know how many pranks Those there were ended before you were born dude i know i know i'm an wow. old soul tom I'm, I'm an old soul you, you know yeah i like i like to pl- i like to play mahjong in my spare time um <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, so it's a little for a high school dropout. Those are big words. Roman lead. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Wow. I remember I was I remember I remember at a gig one time seeing a gal up on stage. She's like, you know, I love what Winnie Churchill said when she said and then quoted Winston Churchill as a woman. I thought that was great. I was like, well, I you know, she might have more schooled me, but I know that Winston Churchill is a dude. So you never know. So yeah, uh in terms of pranks, that's probably that's what I got for now, I think on on, on that. Hit me with some more Dan Patrick questions. All right, dude. Favorite team? Uh, uh, Yankees, Knicks, and um, uh, I go New York football teams. Do you miss Carmelo Anthony from the Knicks? Oh, I do not. No, I never liked him. I never liked him. I never liked A Rod. Um, I was not never a big fan of those guys. I, I mean, I, I loved Sprewell, Ewing, like that. When I started watching the Knicks, uh, it was Sprewell, Ewing, Allen yeah. Houston, Charlie Parker, like late nineties. Like I still am traumatized from seeing Sprewell trapped under the basket with Tim Duncan and David Robinson with their hands <laughs> over him as the as the finals like disintegrated before my eyes. Like that was the that was the closest the Knicks ever got. And like they, they had a they had a few years where they were they had potential, right? Uh, they so, did. I mean, the Jeremy Lin year. They went. They went to the. They went to the first round against the Pacers a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And I listen to a lot of sports talk radio. I, for me, sports talk radio helps me clear my mind. Um, so I actually use uh, sports talk radio yeah. as a as a way to like zone out. If I listen to business podcasts or or trainings, or even if I listen to right, music, my mind work, works right? too fast. Yeah. Or, or I'll just tune it out because it's like I know I'm trying to learn something and I just will completely think about something different. But for some reason, Sports Talk Radio is mindless enough that I, it's like for me, that's my meditation. Okay. So what shows do you listen to? Um, I listen to the Bill Simmons podcast. I listen to the Michael K show, who is uh, uh, the Yankees announcer here uh, on, on the Yes Network. And he's, you know, he has a show on ESPN Radio. I listen to First Take with Stephen A. Smith um, and another New York sports show called Humpty and Canty, which is the a former Islanders goalie, oh, yeah. Rick DiPietro, and um, a guy named Chris Canty who used to play for the Giants. Is a D end, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So those are, those are my, and that usually keeps me going with like stuff to listen to throughout the day. I also use, I also recommend if you listen to podcasts, I also recommend a, a service called, uh, or an app called Ca- uh, Pocket Casts. Um, it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's, it's really good. It's the best one that I've found for um, subscribing to the ones that you want and the, the playback. For you. I mean, you can customize it a lot, but yeah, I'm a super nerd with that stuff. So pocket cast is awesome. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, sweet man. So favorite Knicks play. Oh, my favorite one, name. one play that stands out. Oh man. I, it would have to be the, it would have to be when they lost in the finals against the, against the Spurs. Okay. Because to me, that's so Knicks. Like that's so that's just so Knicks. Like number one, it's the most excited I've ever been as a Knicks fan. Oh yeah. And then and then number two, it's the pinnacle of my depression. Uh it's or it's where my depression is attached to as a Knicks fan. Um yeah, you know, that's, that's as good as it was ever gonna it's be. It's ever gonna get. Yep. Until they, until they brought in Carmelo. Yeah, and then that was done. It was just it was it. I mean Jeremy yeah. Lynn was a bright spot for a few weeks and that was about it, you know. Being a, it's hard. Yeah. Living living in Salt Lake City, I'm I'm a root for the home team, Jazz fan. I sure, didn't grow up sure. that way, but we 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 love the Jazz and right. You know, Carmelo this last week, OKC and Utah playing each other. I became a huge Carmelo fan of. Right. You, you want to play against that guy? It's really good when you're playing against Carmelo. When he's not on your team and you can drive around him, oh, how, absolutely, not even a question. <laughs> like, hey, watch him all the way to the basket, Carmelo. Don't move. Just watch yep. him go past you. Just let, just let it. <laughs> just, just drink your, just drink your drink and hang out. It's fine. They'll score. It's no big deal. So, so I, the reason I ask, I, I, it was a loaded question. My very favorite Knicks play of all time is John Starks dunking over Jordan and Horace Grant. Just left-handed, minute left in the game. They're dying on the vine, and he just, boom, huge. Absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, and I'm not going to complain about being a Knicks fan because also as a Yankees fan, like I went through the best run you could ever have as a sports fan. Yeah. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not, like I'm not crying, like I'm not crying a, 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 a foul on, on the next thing. Like it's fine. Like I'm one Dude. for two on teams. And it's like, it's cool because it makes me be able to relate to Jets fans better. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> it's all good it's if there was triple a in football the jets would be the top triple a team 100 percent, 100 percent, absolutely awesome. <laughs> that is awesome man all right dude we're gonna wrap it up thank you so much for the time like i said we're we're gonna have to just keep going and, and do this again have you on live 
Oh yeah. Do, oh do my gosh. Fun stuff. So do I can't yeah. wait to jam with you on that sales, that sales thing, because you know what? Like I spent so much time trying to dial in a good sales force and spent a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of different people in like some pretty high level sales positions. And then I like, when the epiphany happened, I was like, Oh my gosh, I can do this so much better, so much cheaper with such a different model. Like uh, it just, boom. I mean, it was the it was a, a, an epiphany like I've never had. I cannot for, wait to talk to you about that. There, with everybody trying to sell high ticket, this is the best answer. It was, it, yeah, hundred percent. You called me with it. I was like, oh, <laughs> you found it. You found yeah, it. that's right. Before exactly. Now. The you holy grail. It. Here it is, baby. So, yep. Awesome. So we'll we'll leave that teaser, man. Let's give give my best to MJ. Thank you. Found Revenue Podcast. So much fun to have you, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate any, it. Any parting shots? Any other vanilla thunder? Oh man, uh, you can go. Well, you can go to be the uplift.com, be the uplift.com to check out uh, our website and also see um, uh, some pictures of Komodo dragons and possibly a recipe on, uh, on how to make uh, uh, Earl Grey breakfast tea um, on our homepage. So if you're looking for that kind of stuff, it's definitely the place to go. If you're looking for the sales training and personal development and how to really do the psychology of success and the principles of wealth creation and learn about the law of attraction, you go to ESPN.com or something. That's fine. It's yeah, it's all whatever that, you want to do. That stuff's everywhere. Yeah. You know, who can <laughs> just, uh, just check, just check the, just check the NCAA men's uh, uh, scoreboard. It'll tell you all you need to know about that stuff. It's fine. There we go. Thanks for having me, man. This is really fun. Rock and roll, man. for listening to this episode of Found Revenue with Tom Collins. If you thought this podcast was helpful, please leave a review. Thank you for your support. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Found Revenue. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting. Found Revenue.